everyone for a brand new video review and I'm reviewing NECA's re-release of their spring-loaded holster Robocop action figure. So if you are friends with me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter and whatnot or have watched my previous reviews, um, you'll know that I never really had the chance to collect the first release or a lot of the older figures and collectibles that NECA and other companies have had um, quite simply because I'm still fairly new to collecting. I've only been collecting for maybe two or three years now and a lot of these figures have been out for five, six, seven, maybe even ten years. But NECA has been re-releasing a lot of their figures with the Terminator endoskeleton I reviewed last week, um, now with this Robocop, and making some improvements to other figures like the term Ultimate Terminator coming up. So I finally have the chance to collect all these figures that I either never had or Actually, in the case of this Robocop, I do remember having a Robocop figure, but I guess I threw it away or sold it or got rid of it somehow because I never knew I was going to be this much of a collecting fanboy geek um, at this time. So, without further ado, let's take a closer look at this Robocop packaging. As you can see, um, the similar way with the Terminator endoskeleton, NECA has a new window box packaging similar to their Planet of the Apes figures and as well as the Star Wars Black Series figures. Um, it's more you know, the window in the middle with the cardboard coming down the side. And you can see the full figure with the accessories. And looking at the bottom, we have a illustrated version of Robocop. Um, with the Robocop logo and what this action figure is, you know, on the side, going there. Turning it around on the sides, we have a Robocop with the Omnicorp logo, um, holster action Robocop, and the same thing on the other side. And the back is actually pretty minimal, I guess, pretty simple. Um, I believe this is Robocop's chest when, you know, his neck is up here. And then looking at the right, we see the Omnicorp logo again up there, and it says part man, part machine, all cop, the future of law enforcement. Kind of wish it said the future of law enforcement is here, but, you know, no big deal. And at the bottom we have instructions that talk about the um, holster action movement, I guess. You know, saying opening and closing, um, closing one and two, steps one and two for that. So when we get a closer look at the figure, we'll see how that goes. So let's open up Robocop and take a look at this re-released figure. Alrighty, here we have Robocop out of his packaging and I am just so happy to finally have <laughs> this figure. Um, you know, if you had watched my previous review of the um, ED-209 or ED-209, it was kind of missing a Robocop. You know, I have the uh, Play Arts Kai Robocop but that is kind of too big for these scale figures um, and the articulation is a lot better actually on the Play Arts Kai but you know I'm just so happy to finally have a NECA Robocop um, to have a little bit more Robocop in my collection you know there's always some figures that you want or characters and themes but they don't really fit and Robocop I just like to keep it basic have the original um, Robocop original Ed 209 and, you know, it's a great duo, a great pair to have. So let's take a closer look at the figure itself. As you can see, it's a beautiful bright silver paint um, all throughout the armor, as well as the glossy black, um, more on the joints and limb portions of the figure. Um, I apologize if we hear some birds singing in the backyard. We just redid our backyard and, you know, all the lizards and birds have been hanging out there. So hopefully it's not too distracting. But anyway, so as I said, you know, we have the glossy bright silver um, color or the tone paint job to, you know, most of the armor plating. And I know there's always been that color differentiation or color... Um, I guess mistakes, whatever you want to call it, that fans and moviegoers complain about or like to argue about whether it's the more bluish tone or silver tone. And as we see in the ED-209, which I'll bring in in a moment, um, it does have the more bluish, grayish tone to it. But, you know, either way, this Robocop, it's a beautiful paint job on it. Um, it really stands out. It's simple and yet clean and all the bolts and details and lines to it just make it stand out perfectly, you know, in the robotic form or machine form that it is in. 
So taking a look down the figure, you know, we see the legs, as I was mentioning, all the lines and bolts and tools or parts that are there. And again, we do have the pistons that work in the back of the heels um, and the calves that they do work perfect, you know, they don't detach or anything. That was an issue I faced with the Play Arts Kai, you know, it would actually detach from the calf, which I don't know if it's meant to do that or if it's just a error on the quality control or an error in design, but these I haven't had an issue with them. And you know, as, I can, as you can see, I tried getting it in the famous pose, but the articulation does kind of hinder it, so you can't put this arm out too much, you can't put that too much, um, but you know, still getting a good pose with it. Turning it around, you know, we have a lot more details in the back as well with the different parts of the machine itself, or the plates, working down. And the accessories that do come with it um, are the interchangeable hand that has that needle thing that he uses to put into um, the computers. Well, watch it there. Kind of similar to R2-D2 in Star Wars. You know, he plugs into a computer and he's able to read the diagnostics. Um, I didn't take that out of the packaging. I don't want to, you know, deal with that too much. Um, and the pistol itself, you know, his famous weapon of choice. There isn't too much crazy detail in this. Um, you know, it's just one solid black paint job. I do wish they did a better job at the paint itself. Um, maybe do something to distinguish the actual paint if I can get that focused a little bit in there. There we go. I'll try to do my best with that. Um, you know, it's nothing too crazy with it. We do see some detail here and there with the lines here and the different designs. Um, it is kind of elevated on the hilt right there. But, you know, it's nothing too crazy. It is pretty thin as well. Um, I do wish there was a little bit more thought into the pistol. Um, we have seen you know, such great detail in the weapons of other characters and other figures. So I do think it was kind of lacking, especially with a re-release. Um, I can't compare it to the first release, but, you know, I was hoping for a little improvement with the re-release. So now another issue that, you know, a lot of people have been pointing out is the head sculpt um, stating that the helmet or I guess the head is too high up as you can see it's a little bit tilted and the nose is showing to me it's not a huge issue I'm actually more upset about the tilt in the helmet that you know it's not that straight I don't really care that the nose is showing that much because it's not that crazy of a big deal um, it's not like you know we're seeing his whole face it's just a little like the tip of his nose but the tilt is really what's kind of bothering me um, to see you know that angle in the helmet as you can see in the video as well i just think that's something that could be avoided especially for a re-release but you know i guess it's what can you do it's a quality control issue um and that's about it to it so let's take a look at this figure's articulation the head is on a ball joint so we get a little bit upward movement not too much he can look down quite a bit he can rotate all the way around as well the arms, you know, we have full rotation. Um, they do kind of tilt in and out, but again, the armor or the way it's designed only lets it go out that far and that much in. The elbows are very tight, but it's just a single joint that does go in and out a little bit. Let me take that pistol out. And there's no articulation in the hands, which I'm kind of bummed about. I thought there would be. I'm not sure, again, from the first release if there was. But these hands just don't move at all. There's, it's just one solid piece. Um, and the same thing for the other arm. We have an upper torso right there and a slight crunch. Um, and then at the thighs, and you can get a better crunch with there. The upper thighs, you know, we go in and out a slight twist again again the articulation is pretty much hindered from the body I mean the same thing it does also look like this thigh is closer in you know there's a larger gap on the right side I'm not sure if that's a quality issue or if I just need to pop it in the knee single ratchet joint there and the feet do go up and down um, no twist at all and then showing the pistons in the back you know they do move let me get that back in focus they do move up and down, so that's pretty cool to have. And then also we do have the holster, which I did close to take out the pistol, but I can't seem to get it 
back open. Um, let me grab the box real quick and take a look at that. I thought, I always thought you just kind of push it and it pops open. Oh, so there is a lever. Oh, wow, I never knew that. So let's see here. Does it work? There we go. So here in the back, there will be a little, um, I guess, a button or level, lever that you push up to, you know, open it up. And as you can see, that's where he keeps his pistol in there. Just right in there. Come on. Let's get that back in there, if it'll fit again. And to close it, you just got to snap it. And, <laughs> well, isn't that great? I was even told, be careful with it. I had shared that I got this figure on Facebook. Someone told me, be careful. And it broke. So clearly, NECA's quality control is still lacking with the uh, spring-loaded holster. Well, that's good to know. I'm not sure if this can be put back into place. I'm not quite sure where it broke off. But um, I guess if I can close that part, I won't even bother anymore. Um, oh, there you go. I got the front, the thigh to snap back in. Well, that's a little embarrassing from my review, but I guess it just goes to show you the uh, quality control with this particular figure. Um, you know, I gotta say, I absolutely love NECA. I rarely, if ever, have issues with them. Um, I have maybe over 20, 25 Predators. I've only ever had one paint issue and they replaced it real fast. Um, never an issue with Terminators. The ED-209 was fine. And this is really the first figure I have a real issue with. Um, and as you can see, this is the issue that has happened. So hopefully I'll be able to snap this back in. I won't you know, waste time in the review doing it. Um, but let me bring in the ED-209 to give a little size comparison for those who don't have either figure. So there we go, you know, ED is quite larger than Robocop, um, as we saw in the film as well. Height-wise, you know, ED stands about an inch taller, and of course a lot wider, and with the sound effects too. So, there we have it folks, we have our, okay, had to push the button with the longest, uh, <laughs> I had to push the button with the longest quote coming out, but there we have it everyone, um, the new re-released Robocop by NECA, um, if you don't have it, I would recommend getting it, because the older Robocop figure is pretty expensive, um, and I guess with the older one it has the same issue, so there really is no avoiding that spring holster action. Um, but nonetheless, thank you everyone for watching, stay tuned for my next video review, and please be sure to like and subscribe to all my pages. Bye.